I couldn't give a tinker's fig. The Rust Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It is episode 352. It's the first week of November of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. We're going to be talking about a lot of those things that we uh, normally can't talk about, though, this week. Because... (laughs) going to be a lot of old man talk it's going to be a lot of discussing the erect nipples <laughs> of the, the former big show paul white no more bs paul white <laughs> it's going to be uh talking about uh rick flair and his mushroom energy drink mm-hmm. and uh wwe running a show in saudi arabia a game Start with the former World Wrestling Federation. We have a uh, crowd jewel coming up on Saturday from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The megastar LA Knight is challenging Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. They have seven main card matches and the return of the vaunted pre show match mm-hmm. on this event. Um, Sami Zayn versus JD McDonough in the roster versus Judgment Day feud that has taken over Monday Night Raw that has bled over into the Crown Jewel pre show. Think of the Judgment Day being all over Raw and NXT and sometimes SmackDown. I like it that it's gotten so, um, repetitive that like the announcers are talking about it now. Yes, like Wade Barrett's on Raw on Monday, being like, "Hey, you know, they, we've been doing this angle where JD McDonough wants to join the Judgment Day, and they won't let him for like three months now. When's uh, when are they gonna let him in the group?" <laughs> like, yeah, we question. don't know. Good question, Wade. Um, you know, I think they're they're over. Like they're a good they're a good act. I just I've watched every feeling like every combination of. Sami Zayn or Cody Rhodes versus a member of the Judgment Day or Jey Uso versus a member of the Judgment Day uh, that I can think of in singles matches, tag matches, whatevers. And uh, we're just kind of rinsing and repeating, but, you know, not to look past this Crown Jewel show, but, uh, you know, you assume they're either doing regular Survivor Series or maybe War Games again in a, in a few weeks, so... Maybe then, maybe then we'll get to do a little bit of uh, advancement in this uh, this wonderful sprawling epic that is uh, the Judgment Day being on television for nine hours a week. <laughs> yes, they're they are all over NXT. Also, it's usually just Dom and Rhea, but it's like if you are uh, Dom and you manage to avoid NXT altogether, and you're Rhea. And you graduated the developmental program and are better than 95% of the people on the main roster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you feel like when they send you to Orlando every Tuesday? <laughs> what's what's Paul's version of I'll owe you one, pal? You know, like you got we're, we're, trying, we're trying to get a TV deal for NXT here. We need some star power. I guess. I'll owe you I don't one, know. Pal. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. All right. But uh, we can talk about the rest of the card here. Uh, Rhea Ripley, the aforementioned Rhea Ripley, defending the Women's World Championship against Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, Raquel Rodriguez, and Nia Jax. All the stars are here. <laughs> Should be fantastic. Uh, you know, it's I'm perversely enjoying Nia Jax being back. <laughs> because This is her revenge tour. Yeah. <laughs> So this is uh there's something about her uh there's always the, there's an element of real danger in any match that she's in um, break it down into a shoot at any point right so there's some fun there hey I'm, like Rhea Rhea so much of Rhea's stuff is focused on like the boys storylines so nice that she gets to have a pay per view match here so um yeah I don't it'll, I'm sure the match will be fine. <laughs> Uh, or maybe it'll be terrible because of some of the people that are involved. But 
maybe again. There's always that chance that we could just start throwing real punches at some point when Naya's in there. So fingers crossed. Yeah, that uh, that does add an element of danger. It does. It feels exciting. The uh, the Raw men's title, the World Heavyweight Championship on the line with Seth Rollins defending against Drew McIntyre, who still hasn't turned heel yet. <laughs> He's come closer than ever, but still, still tweener Drew McIntyre challenging Seth freaking Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. Well, I think we discussed this a few weeks. Maybe he'll... The, the classic WWE thing will be we all know he's turning heel, but he's going to lose clean to the champion and then turn heel on the champion after the match or the next night. And then they'll feud for another two months, even though the feud started with the champion beating him clean. So that's what I would expect here. Yeah, that, sound, that sounds about right. Um the other Monday Night Raw match on this pay-per-view was Cody Rhodes versus Damian Priest. And they gave Cody a storyline injury last week. And then he ran out at 10.56 and called Damian Priest a walk behind her on uh, on this week's show. So um, they're really, really playing all of Dusty's heads. That's right. Uh, yeah, probably be an all right match. Uh, you know, a very... Uh... I mean, I, I don't know. I got, I doesn't, like I said, it's just been going for so long that it's hard to get excited about any of this, but you know, Cody still, Cody still generally feels like a star when he's out there. So I think he'll, he'll will this to be maybe better than your average raw TV match. If nothing else. Yeah. It feels very much like a raw main event, but uh, we'll see how that goes. The, uh, the SmackDown brand will be represented by one, two, three, four matches on this show. Uh, let's see here. United States Championship, Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul. Rey has won a lot of matches under Paul Levesque's tenure as the uh, chief creative officer, chief content officer of uh, WWE. And I think that comes to an end when uh, Paul's favorite child logan paul beats him uh in the kingdom of saudi arabia this saturday paul's favorite paul uh yeah i i think logan paul will win he's not around all the time but that doesn't matter and he can wear the he can have the wwe u.s championship sitting next to him while he does his podcast that inexplicably like 30 million people watch on youtube every week and whatever else he does he can just carry the belt with him everywhere carry the belt while he's doing boxing matches or walking his brother out to the ring for his boxing matches, just carries the belt everywhere with them. I can Nick Khan loves this idea, loves the idea of Logan Paul being the U S champion. I bet that he does. Uh, EO sky versus Bianca Belair for the other women's title, the WWE women's championship. Um, Bianca's back. EO's going to uh, wrestle her. <laughs> And uh you've seen it before. It's uh it was good before. Um, yeah, yeah. They have the storyline here where damage control took out Bianca for two months while she uh, uh took a mental health break, <laughs> and uh then she came back and uh saved Charlotte and uh then just announced she was getting a title match. Like it's more story than they often do. True. Uh, I'm not saying it's a lot. It's it's their best story ever, but it's more story than they usually do. And Bianca did win the belt and then EO cashed in on her. Correct. So she would technically be owed a rematch theoretically, even though she was only champion for two minutes or whatever. Sure. So, yeah, that's all fine. Um, they, I think they, they could have fleshed that out a little bit. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. <laughs> they they do have a lot of time where they could have made <laughs> made a try to make this care a little bit more. But it's as you said, <laughs> the bar is on the floor sometimes. Uh, but no, I think this will be fine, and I would expect either at this show or maybe next next uh, next few weeks at Survivor Series. I assume Bianca's getting this belt, and then I assume it's Bianca and Charlotte at WrestleMania next year. So uh, that's like the last big match that they have. I guess they, I guess they didn't really do Bianca versus Rhea ever, did they? So. It's like they're they're two like 
at least not in WWE or not 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 on non NXT television. So, right. like Char- Charlotte and Bianca feels like a a match that they would they would want to have main event night one of WrestleMania. Or why not? <laughs> not the real main event, obviously, but <laughs> that's Romans. But. All right, uh, that's hurt. One, that's hurtful. <laughs> um, because I know what you're implying. I'm just I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's how <laughs> Romans never made eventing night one, is what I'm saying. So there's right. a way, there's a way that they look they look at those two night WrestleManias, is all I'm saying. Right. For better or worse, fair or not. John Cena's wrestling solo Sokoa on this show. <laughs> Maybe John's last appearance for a while. Maybe not. That that strike still hasn't been settled. Uh, writers are back writing projects. They're writing their wonderful variety shows, and uh, but John can't act in them. That's right. Uh, so um, yeah, I think they have been selling that this as John has not had a singles win in five years or whatever the number is. Unbelievable. And uh, and he probably does need a win because yeah. the next time he comes back to put over uh, Lonnie Donegan at WrestleMania, then it should mean something. Yeah. Yeah, I think he should win a lot more often than he does. I think that's we I mean, we just got through talking about how how often Ray won before the current regime took over yeah. and how it generally means a little bit more when he loses now. Yes. Um and they should be treating John Cena the same. That's why he, we, he, we absolutely he, should not have lost to Austin Theory. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like the effort that he did not put in to putting over Austin Theory compared to the effort he put into getting, you know, to giving LA Knight the shine at the last pay per view. Right. Uh, just incredible. Really, like, really, like, notched John Cena up in my book as like an all time great. <laughs> <laughs> like you knew you knew what you're doing <laughs> tremendous and uh the aforementioned la knight challenging for the universal title against roman reigns um probably protect la but uh he has to do a job here right yeah absolutely i mean it's it's the roman reigns special right there will be talking and squeezing and interference and maybe la gets a gets like one visual pin on him with a ref knocked out or Paul distracting the ref or whatever. And, uh, and then he loses. And as always is the case when you have a big baby face, who's gotten over in, uh, in a company where Roman Reigns is the world champion uh, and will be the world champion for the foreseeable future. Uh, it makes you curious what happens to LA Knight after this show. Uh, does the, does the crowd stay invested in him the way they have been once he's not, you know, no longer on the upswing. I mean, they have another world title. Not that anyone really cares about it, but he could win that or you could set up him and Logan Paul and he could try to get the U.S. championship from him at some point. Like you could keep doing stuff with him. But once he tries and fails to beat the top guy, will will the crowd kind of realize his his lot in life and go, all right, that's fine. We accept him at that level or does this crowd will is I don't think WWE fans we've talked about this. They don't get mad when guys they like lose anymore. Like that they don't have that dog in them anymore. No. No, it's a different uh it's a different audience now. Um and we'll see how they respond indeed. Um Survivor series, they've kind of been building Survivor Series alongside this Crown Jewel show. We know that we're going to get um, some manner of, of team versus team thing here, whether it's War Games or not. You're going to have the Judgment Day against Cody and Jey Uso and Sammy and Kevin. And um, yeah, so that uh, that build will kick in. Mm-hmm. Um, coming up on Monday on Raw, but um, I I think everyone is talking in general terms about how they have have there's clearly long term pieces in play here, and I am just sitting here scratching my head like, um, what? I 
don't know what you're talking about. Like, what do you think they're building long term? <laughs> it's um, like, yeah. I mean, there's, I think there's something you could maybe gleam or guess that the fact that Kevin got forced to go to SmackDown because Cody got Jay on Raw. Like, so if Kevin's the fourth guy in that match, even though guys just go to every show as we've been talking about whenever they want, but right. we pretend like the brand split matters when we have a storyline reason for it to matter. Um, so like maybe Kevin turns heel in the war games and you know, you do like Kevin and Cody at the rumble or something. I don't know. Like you, you get, I, I don't know what else there is to really build out of that or, or Damien, or you finally pull the trigger on priest turning baby face on Finn or whatever. I guess those are your, your, your big options. If somebody turns on somebody, <laughs> but that doesn't, yeah, I get. I look. It would be nice to see some sort of progression, even if it's something they've been telegraphing for months. I, I su I suppose. I suppose I can see that. And, uh, I I do ex still expect some kind of brand versus brand thing in here somewhere because uh, mm -hmm. Seth Rollins put his booking sheet out for uh, November, and he's on the SmackDown on uh. Uh, before Survivor Series, he I guess that could just be a dark match. I knew they do they do bring him in for uh dark matches occasionally there, but That's uh, true. and they they did do that weird little segment where um uh Magnus threw uh threw Adam Pierce and somebody out of out of SmackDown a couple of weeks ago. Yes, so they're they're doing some sort of uh gm rivalry between raw and smackdown or at least they were teasing it a couple of weeks ago those always work that's wonderful yeah um, remember all those wonderful segments where teddy long and eric bischoff had to talk about brand supremacy w weren't those wonderful yes they were um eric of the viking raiders uh had his neck fused it's spinal fusion everyone calls it neck fusion it's cervical spine it's it's spinal fusion <laughs> drives me absolutely insane <laughs> uh best wishes to him uh bianca belair and montez ford uh montez ford's reality show will debut in february on hulu i can't wait to not watch god bless <laughs> them they seem like a wonderful couple and i wish them and their show the very best well, uh, I, I just need to know if there are other WWE wrestlers on the show and who is taking like the Rusev role on that show or the Fandango role and being like the one interesting character <laughs> uh, for that I would enjoy on that show versus the rest of it just being a show made for a different audience. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is very much that. There is a uh, there is a wonderful element to uh our show this week in that uh when you when you speak it sounds as if you are in um uh the a british pub <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is tremendous i also want to apologize for mispronouncing lyra lyra valkyria's name uh for pretty much my entire life lyra valkyria She's the NXT Women's Champion, and she's uh, returning to that show next week after uh, beating Becky Lynch. And uh, Lola Vice won the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament. Uh, everyone who's extremely horny on Twitter will enjoy that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Creeds look like they're headed to the main roster from NXT. So um, good for them. They've uh, run out of stories to tell in NXT. Yeah, been down there. I mean, Roderick Strong still worked there the last time they were <laughs> when they were down there, right? Like they've been down there a long time, at least yeah. in NXT time. Yes. Um. So that's kind of uh kind of what's happening there, and then uh, everyone is pretty negative on AEW this week. Uh, <laughs> Ric Flair has signed a two-year contract. That's right. Um. No more BS. Paul White and his nipples. <laughs> are returning to the ring to wrestle on a random dynamite uh in in uh in Los Angeles or Inglewood, California. Um 
MJF is feuding with half the roster. Uh, the uh, yeah, I don't know. The, we you want to go micro or macro in talking about uh, uh, AEW? I guess the good news is more people watched Dynamite this week because there wasn't a um, active shooter situation anywhere in the country. Yep. I, I was like, do we want to do we want to say like the two things that I liked about Dynamite before we shit on it for twenty minutes or? <laughs> Well, or save uh, the two thing, two nice things for the end. It's really your call, or we could sandwich compliment it. You may um, it. Uh, <laughs> I'll start out with one. They did a like a through line story on Dynamite this week, even though I think it was pretty clear for the last three weeks that it was shite. Yeah, that <laughs> that the acclaimed was going to be the partners, where right. MJF is going around asking everyone, like trying to find partners, but because of the history of MJF in this company, everyone except the acclaimed and Jeff Jarrett, as it turns out, hate him and don't want to team with him. Except for Joe, I guess, who would team with him in exchange for a title shot. But nobody else likes this guy. So the whole show is him trying in vain to find a tag partner. And at the end, he has the baby faces come out. They get their like dude love teaming with Steve Austin thing. Um, and then the baby faces lost which is not a good, <laughs> not a good fun ending to the show. But uh, I thought it was like, okay, they don't normally do that. They don't normally have a through line from like the opening segment and then keep cutting back to it throughout the show. And then it leads into the main event. So I appreciate them trying something different, even if, you know, it wasn't all a home run. Uh I appreciate them trying something uh, as a way to maybe hold your interest in a story and in end in a match, quite frankly, that I wasn't particularly interested in seeing uh, at the time. So that's my, that's my first compliment. We'll save the other one for the end. All right. Um, uh, so they set up three matches for their uh, next pay-per-view on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the f- artist formerly known as edge will be teaming with Darby Allen and sting as, uh, as, was abundantly clear against uh, Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Nick Wayne. So uh, that'll be happening. They set up uh, Hangman versus Swerve Strickland 2, mm-hmm. uh, following up on a terrible home and fake home invasion angle uh, from last week. And uh, and uh, 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 John Moxley will be challenging Orange Cassidy for the International Championship again in, uh, I'm sure, what will be a hoot. Yeah, um, <laughs> let's just we didn't do a show last week, so I didn't get to talk about, you know, we I have multiple times on the show. We've both complimented Swerve as far as like his aura, as far as his work. Pretty talented guy, I think. Um, definitely a guy I would look to build around. That being said, a cool he, factor you can't teach. Exactly. That being said. <laughs> He is severely Lucha Underground pilled. <laughs> and Horrible ideas. And that combined with maybe more and more ex-WWE and TNA people having the boss's ear uh, leads to some real, real dumb stuff that I don't want anywhere near. Whereas like, I'm not going to romanticize like year one and two of AEW and pretend there were no problems and it was always a great show because it wasn't. But like it was a fairly simple show as far as like be a wrestling match to open, be a long wrestling match in the middle, get a women's match at nine at nine forty five, and then uh, or would then would have to wrap up at nine forty five. You get your main event that would also be good, and it was simple. And even if everything wasn't great, there was good wrestling every week. And now there's just, there's so much talking. There's so much uh, wacky 2010s WWE and TNA comedy on this show. Uh, And I use the term comedy loosely. And there's just, most importantly, there is so much talking (laughs) on this show now. And it's, it's not good because that's the other thing too. It's like, Sometimes if it's a go home show for a pay-per-view or whatever, you got to do a lot of talking. You got to do a lot of video packages. I understand, but it's the amount of time wrestling versus the amount of time talking is really, at least it feels this way as a fan. I haven't done the math 
I'm sure uh, WrestleNomics or somebody has probably broken this down to a science, but it feels to me as a person watching the show every week, uh, I'm not getting my stopwatch out, but it feels like the amount of talking has gone way up and the amount of good to great wrestling has gone way down on this show. And that makes it a lot harder to enjoy just in general. Um, And then when you add in like stupid logical fallacies like swerve broke into someone's house and threatened his child and he's just at work and he gets a microphone and the and the guy whose child he's threatened is just having a wrestling match the next week i don't know i think that's i think that's dumb i think that's wwe stuff i think that's tna stuff and uh i don't want it anywhere near this show but here we are that's where we are with AEW right now there you go. Well, in addition to, um, as you alluded to, there's a lot of former WWE creative slash producer types that work there now. Uh, Brian Danielson suggested that Tony Khan hire Jimmy Jacobs to be his best friend and <laughs> uh, and to travel with him on uh, all the time, everywhere, and uh, to get an apartment uh, right next to Tony's uh, house so that um, he can be on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I would imagine that's a very difficult job. And I don't know Jimmy Jacobs. I don't know Jimmy Jacobs from the man of the moon. I don't know anything about him, uh, but uh, there seems to be a lot of evidence that since Jimmy showed up, uh, these shows uh, 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 have, have gotten markedly worse. Uh, people don't enjoy uh, the guy, what's his name? Mike Mansuri that they hired from WWE, who uh, is a television production guy that all of the um, talent that worked with him in WWE likes him personally. And I know from some of his social media posts that he takes any criticism very, very hard. And I know he's trying to do a very good job. And uh, people that we like and uh, root for uh, like him, but uh, he clearly has a vision for what a wrestling television show is like, and it doesn't seem to be the spirit of those first and second year AEW Dynamites that you uh, laid out there. Um, Sanjay Dutt and Jeff Jarrett uh, came into the company and Mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, influence, Sanjay especially. And um, I, their track record creatively speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then you have a lot of um, the thespians have shown up. Uh, a- Adam Copeland, uh, he's got a talk on every show. And uh, Christian Cage, he's got a talk on every show. Mm-hmm. And they have to talk to each other on every show. And I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Everybody loves what Christian's done this year. Sure. Everybody loves the the angry dad or the father figure thing. And, and he's wildly entertaining. Absolutely. Uh, and as part of a wonderful variety show. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> problem is when you have like maybe 12 of uh of of the thespians that need that need their time to do their their speaking uh mjf has always been a talk first guy mm-hmm. and uh he's feuding with the whole roster <laughs> and he's also the tag team champions by himself the roh tag team champions by himself and the world champion of the company and uh jay white stole his belt a month ago and uh <laughs> He's a world champion without a belt. He had a world title match without a belt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We again, we didn't do a show last week, but they uh, they seemingly forgot until about uh, nine days before uh, before it happened that MJF was about to break Kenny Kenny's reign as the longest reigning uh, world champion in the company's history. So they very quickly threw together a uh, a Kenny MJF match, which was a very good television match. Really, really good. But uh, like 400,000 people saw it because uh, it happened on a Saturday night uh, and it, it had a three or three day build. So, sure. Um, so we've laid out a, a lot of, of problems here. Tony Storm. Everybody loves the Tony Storm mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. No one has any issues with it. Uh, look. Till maybe Luther showed up as her butler. <laughs> um, everyone's got to have a butler. 
I'm just conf- I'm concerned because we know Luther is a Jericho guy. Oh yeah. And the closer Chris Jericho is to anything that people like in AEW, well, history speaks for itself, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it's definitely concerning. Uh, but uh, everybody likes that. Like everybody everybody likes two or three things that are going on right sure. now. And uh, everybody uh, hates the way that the shows are laid out. <laughs> yeah, I think I, that's it, a... it feels very I, I probably saw a couple of people say this this week. It's not my original thought completely, but it's very 2010s WWE in that you can find things to enjoy as you've just laid out. But the overall vibes of the company and the overall feeling of the company in general is bad. <laughs> and people feel like it's a bad show right now. And that's a hard even if you can find you can parse out little things that you do like, but it's it's getting but the company as a whole has feels like it has a very negative uh, relationship, at least online. It's hard to say because, again, they did a better number this week than they did last week. Again, we talked about the outlying factors that led to that number being so down last week. But um, so maybe the, the still rank and file however many non non Twitter users who just watch the show every Wednesday night, maybe they still love it. I don't know, but um, it feels like you can, you can find your fun to be, there's fun to be had on the show, but the overall show is kind of getting more and more of a slog to get through. Yeah. And, and dynamite dynamite's the main show and uh, it's the worst show. Uh, yeah. Rampage is just, a few quick matches mm-hmm. and you can watch it or not watch it. And there's not a whole lot of canon that happens on that show. So uh, you can watch it or not watch it and be fine. Collision is still pretty much the wrestling show. Mm-hmm. I will give them the credit that they have. Uh, they've the, the tone and tenor of that show has remained the same. Uh, but uh, also it's on uh, Saturday night and there's always sports on Saturday night. And uh, also, Maybe you don't want to devote a fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh night of the week to watching pro wrestling. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and Brian Danielson's out hurt again. And so now uh, I don't know how you can have a roster that size and be short people. But uh, anyway, wrestling is the is the Saturday's the wrestling show and Wednesday's the wonderful variety show. <laughs> and uh, the variety show is not good. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, but uh, at least, at least, at least we have no more BS. Paul White and his and his protruding nipples. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he'll be back teaming with uh, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi. The big four. <laughs> it's, it's like, all right, maybe people are are like who who is getting TV time too on the show? It's. It's Edge and Christian. It's uh, Ric Flair. It's mm-hmm. Chris Jericho. It's the big show. It's the 2008 SmackDown roster. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like who who asked for this? Who wants this? There is a like, thing like I enjoy again. I enjoyed Jericho and show as a team at the time. Speaking of an era where you really had to find your fun in WWE. 14 years ago, yeah. Yeah, they, they were a fun team, especially those really, like, down-in-the-dumps guest host Raw eras. Oh, yeah. Jericho himself and Big Show as well were a big part of making those shows anything resembling watchable. Uh, but it's been, as you said, it's been, 15, it's been 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... To be honest, I'm more excited at the, uh, at the prospect of seeing No More BS Paul White than I am at seeing Chris Jericho wrestle, despite the fact that when No More BS Paul White walked out in his gear with his nipples out on Dynamite this week, uh, he he just he couldn't stand. He couldn't stand like a normal man. Uh, he couldn't stand like a human man. And uh, they they had Kyle Fletcher, um, who they set up for his big heel turn, joining uh, joining Don Cal's family by having him lose on television every week for like eight straight weeks. Right. Um, uh, and uh, he ran up and got KO'd. And then the big show stood there silently, unmoving, 
hands didn't even do his like choke slam pose. <laughs> no, or do just... like a boxer stance to indicate the the KO punch was coming for for Hobbs or or, uh, or whoever. Like no, he just kind of stood there unmoving, yeah. staring <laughs> off into the distance. <laughs> Looked like every step he took t- caused him tremendous pain. Legs bent at an ungodly angle. <laughs> Why is why are his legs shaped like that? I don't like what happened. Like, so he had like two matches in AEW. He wrestled QT Marshall on a pay per view. I think it's the Ugh. Punk's first match. He wrestles QT Marshall on that show, and then he had like a squash match on Dark because they did a television in like his home state of South Carolina. And he did like a lot of local promotion to get people in the building. And he so they gave him like a two minute squash on dark or whatever. I think those are his only matches in uh, in AW. And then he got like a hip surgery or something and he wasn't even on the road for several months. And he's like, he's got to be close to 60, right? Like he's closer to 60 than 50 by now, right? No, I think he's still closer to 50 than 60. Okay, so he's Let like me, Jer- uh... Jericho's age, maybe. Let me, uh, he's 51 years old. That's true. It's just because he's been on television for 36 years, <laughs> but he was pretty young, I guess, when he got started. Yeah, he uh, he uh, debuted in uh, what 95? I guess yeah. he signed it, he signed in 94, but debuted in 95 or something, something along those lines. He debuted in 95, so he's been on TV for almost 30 years, but <laughs> uh, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> he is. Anyway, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, he'll be 52 in February. And we've talked, I mean, for years on this show, we've talked about, you know, the the Paul Heyman theory of you can have a legend that can still go on your show and you shouldn't beat him all the time. You should make him feel like a big deal. But when you have 10 of those guys and also they can't still go, <laughs> that's when you feel like TNA in 2010 when you're just bringing in guys because they're they used to have name value because they used to be somebody and you're just throwing them on your show, hoping they they make your show feel more important. And uh, again, like I said, I'd rather I'd, I'm more interested because I just want to see if this if Paul White at this point, there's a morbid curiosity. Uh, right. Can he do anything? Uh, can he walk? <laughs> Is he going to hit the ropes and 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 run it all? Like I want to see what this, what they what they could do. So I'm more curious to see him in the ring than I am Jericho. But I don't really want to see either of them. I guess is what I keep coming back to. There's also the thing that we talk about with Jericho all the time, which is uh, he's out of ideas and he just does constant self-referential BS. Uh, which yes. The- this is the latest uh, uh, example of that, as he's trademarked the term Jericho, a team a tag team name from 14 years ago that people didn't remember until this week. <laughs> and uh, but the thing is, uh, and Jericho, of all people, who has patterned a lot of himself after Hogan, not uh, not character wise, but just like the way he promotes himself and mm-hmm. never says no to an interview. And anyway, he should realize that Hulk Hogan got like an extra five, six years out of his career by uh, popping in and out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Hogan would come in and he would work for uh, he would work a program and then they'd ask him to do a job and his back would start to hurt <laughs> and he would go home for six <laughs> months. <laughs> right. It's like, yes. And uh, Hogan showing up worked until 2000 until he physically in wwe until he physically could not do any more matches <laughs> right right it's like it worked every time it worked when he came in and did the program and uh, did the run and got the title in 2002 and they got a rest- disappointing wrestlemania match but a wrestlemania match out of him and vince in 03 and then he started to get stale and they did the Mr. America thing and then they fell out of her money and he went home for a year and a half. And then he came back and he did the Sean program and it was awesome. Yeah. And then he went away again, and didn't, didn't do no jobs for Sean. <laughs> and then he came back and he beat Orton and that was it. But he got, you know, what is it? Oh, two, three. He didn't do anything in oh four, but you know, he got five extra years anyway. 
maybe Edge and Christian and the Big Show and Jericho and these guys should be not weekly characters. <laughs> Correct. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. And and Jericho himself, you could say like his his last seven years in WWE, he was in and out. He'd be in for six months and then leave and then come back for the Rumble or Mania or whatever. Like he was pretty smart. I mean, he I think he said that himself. He's like, I started yes. to realize I was more over the less on, I was on television. Yes. So maybe take your own advice. And I know AEW was a different company at the start. You maybe you they needed to build around Jericho. They did not have as many options as they do now of people they can build around. But yes, I think we have evolved past a need for Chris Jericho or a lot of these guys, as you just said, uh, to be weekly, weekly television characters. You could pick two and have them be weekly television characters for a while. And then maybe they, you cycle them out and, and then the other guys can come in and you just, that's then you can keep having your wonderful variety show. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, maybe Ric Flair should just go home altogether. <laughs> I I guess you get to make Ric Flair toys and sell shirts and uh and and whatever. But like what value is Ric Flair bringing to a wrestling company outside of WWE who, you know, has that marketing blitz and you know, owns I mean, all his footage. Right. What value does a Ric Flair in 2023 in a company that can't as you said, utilize any any footage of him from before this year, other than I guess his last match footage. Maybe Conrad will cut him a deal on that. Uh, what else? What what value does does he bring to your to your company, other than if say maybe the owner of uh, of the company was just like a big fan of his and always wanted to hang out with him? I I have no answer for you. Okay. <laughs> I well, wish he does have an energy have drink. For he does have an energy drink. I don't know if you've heard. It's uh, it's mushroom based, and uh, mushroom comes, infused. Yes, right. And it, uh, <laughs> it comes in many flavors. There's a wonderful variety pack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason I brought this up is because I I thought of wonderful variety pack <laughs> like eight hours ago, and I was just like, I gotta figure. <laughs> Thank you. A way to work this in. <laughs> Thank uh, you for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, he's got a he's got an energy drink that he's hawking. Uh, I don't know if this is an addition to, or instead of uh, Rick Flame, Rick Flair's famous Woo Wings, uh, uh, or or his his CBD deal that he had, or whatever else he's sold over the years. I just, I it's a good deal for Rick, I'm sure. <laughs> find to find somebody that'll give him a pe- steady paycheck, but yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I don't see what value this creates or certainly what having him on your television show with any regularity will, uh, will do for you. This is, this is the, this is the audience. Again, we don't know for the audience in the building versus the audience that actually watches the television show, but the audience in the buildings booed a mention of Hulk Hogan two weeks ago or three mm-hmm. weeks ago. Right. It's like, generally speaking, not that, that you know, uh, Hogan, f- fans and flutter fans have always been very different but at this in this day and age uh you just think old whenever you hear either of those names and it's like this is an audience that uh, isn't particularly interested in seeing rick flair <laughs> it's, it's like yes. and 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 thinks he's problematic the way that they think hogan is problematic so what are we doing here it's tone yeah. deaf among all the other issues with it yeah I don't, I don't know, man. Well, so sandwich complimented. You were is something oh, else you liked yes, about that. Uh, yes, uh, I really enjoyed uh, Hikaru Shida slapping the pillow out of the Japanese deathmatch legend Luther's hands, uh, uh, and and then hitting a big running knee on Tony Storm, who was for some reason just sitting <laughs> sitting down on the ramp. Um, I thought that was a pretty funny. I thought the match she had was good, but more importantly, the bit where she, the the succession of images of Sheeta walking up to uh, Luther, slap slapping the pillow, the pillow going flying, Luther running after the pillow, and then her running up the stage and kneeing Tony Storm in the face uh, was uh, was great. It was genuinely really great. So that's it, my that's my other thumb up from Dynamite this week. 
Every everyone was good in that segment because as Sheeta is approaching to hit her running knee on Tony, Tony like inexplicably it, it drops her hands. Yes, <laughs> it's like, it like, oh hello dear, <laughs> just just yeah. so that Sheeta could hit her in the face with her knee. Yes, it was great, awesome. Uh, and uh, look, they. I don't trust everyone's intentions. Like mm-hmm. they've just managed to put Tony Storm on TV in her underwear every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's worse things you could do, um, but uh, it's wildly entertaining. Yeah, you could, and you could dump pies on her head or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> instead, she. I don't quite get the thing where she bites into an orange either, or she like <laughs> no, bites into a bites into a, a piece of fruit with the skin. I don't. I don't get that. Yeah, I don't know if that's like a specific reference to a old film or something that I'm not aware of, but it is. Uh, it is wacky. <laughs> yeah, that is again part of a wonderful variety show. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to get into? No, I think that uh, that about wraps this up. It's uh, it's just an interesting time in wrestling where. Um, that WWE is once again running a show, a propaganda show for uh, the Saudi Arabian government and uh, the, the, the wrestling company that had the worst uh, PR week was, uh, was the other guy. That's, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, well, until next time, everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling play. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. How much time did you spend thinking about Paul White's nipples today? <laughs> um, more than anyone should. <laughs> I decided that you know I was gonna put him in the thumbnail for the YouTube version, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I can't get just like nice studio PNG of Big Show or Paul White in a suit or something. I have to get this image of Paul White." So I spent like 15 minutes uh, at work today just editing out the background so I could put. <laughs> Nice. Haggard old Paul White. Nice. With his arms by his sides, unmoving. <laughs> Giant his er- under his eyes. <laughs> With his erect nipples <laughs> hanging out of his singlet. <laughs> uh, for posterity's sake. <laughs> no one should forget. <laughs> no. Not Paul no. White's nipples. Ugh. If nothing else, this show is going to be a time capsule. <laughs> You can one day go back and look at the YouTube channel and uh, just look at the thumbnails and the titles and see, oh, here's what was happening. <laughs> and hopefully more specifically, oh, here's the shtick we were doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when we when I was uh, flying a few weeks ago, I, I opened my podcast app because I downloaded a couple episodes of one of the pods I listened to to listen on the plane. And I saw that at some point I had downloaded one of our episodes and it was from like January of 21, maybe it was a long time ago. Okay. Um, Maybe even older than that might've been January of 20. Cause I don't think it was during COVID. Rest. But somehow we were talking about, it was whenever CM Punk uh, yelled at the Miz and told him to go suck a blood money covered dick. Yes. And we were talking about how <laughs> perhaps the wrestling business is not, this is not the best fit for Phil. <laughs> like, well, we weren't wrong. Mm. <laughs> and about how he uh, will take the, you know, the slightest provocation as an excuse to go uh, scorched earth on a person. Yes. And how he's a man of many contradictions and he complains about Saudi blood money, but takes Fox's money. Yes. Yes, we definitely talked about that too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, the more things change. <laughs>
I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I, I like when I hit play, that's what we were talking about. I was like, ah, all right, well, <laughs> as usual, one of us is always right about whatever we're talking about. That is fantastic. Uh, um, nipple shields <laughs> for Paul Way. <laughs> it have it could be it could be branded. They could say no more BS on them. Tremendous. Uh, you could be for the woo energy drink. That's right. <laughs> Just have woo on his nipples. <laughs> on his nipples. <laughs> Just cover them bad boys up, all right? <laughs> it's... Children watch this show, for God's sake. You you pointed out there was a time, maybe in his last match or whatever, where he had a more zipped up <laughs> singlet. Right, he had like the MVP zipper thing where the chest is all covered and just the arms are exposed. Not Not this week. He dug out one of the old Big Show singlets and he's like, I could fit into this one I wore in 2011. No, you can't, Paul. (laughs) And you shouldn't. I try to keep on keeping on.